Austinites are waking up today for the first time in a week. They're able to brush their teeth, make breakfast, yeah. and drink water. We got that coffee, <laughs> all without boiling the water first. Historic citywide Austin boil water notice is finally over. So joining us this morning to talk about it is City Manager Spencer Cronk. We had a lot of uh, cranky people who weren't able to drink their <laughs> coffee without boiling yeah. their water, but now it is over. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for be here. being here. Uh, let's talk about the, the moment when you first heard about we needed to start the citywide implementation of boiling water. The city has never, ever done that before. Yeah. That, was all, that was a week ago today. The notice went out at 2 a.m. When did you hear about it, and should you have told people earlier? Well, we were actually tracking these historic floods even a week before that, because as we know, we saw that Lake Travis had filled up more than 30 feet in 48 hours. And so we were working closely with LCRA. We had activated our emergency operations center. Um, and then Austin Water was really looking at the quality of its water and just the levels, the amount of water we were producing. We were tracking that late uh, of that week. Okay. And then starting Sunday, we saw that we weren't able to keep up with the, the demand. And so that Sunday, we knew that we were going to issue a precautionary notice to our residents to make sure that they were doing everything that they could. We did not have to do that. It was not until Tuesday when we really needed to issue that mandatory notice. And so everything that we did on Sunday and Monday was all in the best interest of our residents because we want to keep everyone safe no matter what, even when there was the slightest hint of a risk uh, at, with our water. Do you think that you let that word out um, and made sure that people knew it was precautionary on Monday to not uh, drink the water? Or did you maybe not put the word out enough that it was just precautionary and then we're going to do it mandatory later on? Was there confusion there, I guess is what I'm asking? I, from a public safety standpoint, I don't think there should be any confusion. We want to make sure that people are doing what they need to do to keep safe. And as public officials, we want to do everything that we can to ensure that safety. So even though it was technically only precautionary, something that we wanted to do, uh, we weren't required to do it by the state, okay. uh, but it was really in the best interest of our public. And as a result, we never saw any uh, illnesses. We didn't see any positive uh, tests for bacteria, harmful bacteria. And so we were very fortunate that we were able to weather this without any incidents. And as you said, this was a historic flooding event, you know, God forbid, but if we do see something like this happen again, what are some changes you would like to see in place when we have flooding that could affect Austin's drinking water? Well, certainly climate change is really impacting how all cities and all municipalities are looking at how to ensure that they're keeping their community safe. And so whether it's looking at how we can upgrade our facilities, how we can look at new technology to increase our capacity, how we can even communicate with our residents about better managing their water use. All these are important things that we'll be examining over the next coming weeks and months ahead. Should you, you said you were looking at this a week before, you know, during that week um, when we saw significant flooding. But we also saw thousands and thousands of people who were coming into Austin for the F1 races. Mm -hmm. Did that put a strain on it and did that um, influence your decision whatsoever? Not at all. Not at all. These are things that we want to keep everything in the best interest of the public. This is something that our water utility had never seen in its history and so this was very historic the levels of turbidity or the murkiness of that water was a hundred times more than we had ever seen before so again this was really unprecedented all right, so uh, another thing we've been watching here in our community for about a year now, the Austin Police Department has been working without a contract. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand with negotiations? You know, we spent the summer really working with both the APA, the Austin Police Association, with our Office of the Police Monitor, with the Police Department and the community to look at oversight. That was a really important conversation to be having as a community. They ca there was a working group that came up with recommendations. Just two weeks ago, that re those recommendations were finalized. I've spent the time that I haven't been focused on water right. uh, really looking uh, with uh, both our departments and our Office of Police Monitor to see what recommendations uh, make sense from the city's standpoint. I've been now talking to our council members and we're anxious to get back to the table, hopefully this week. Okay, um, so that's something that you're doing right now with the police contract. Are you also hearing from council members about um, city manager, go and, and figure out what 
went wrong here? How we can make sure that it's better? Does it have anything to do with the treatment plants, that controversial <laughs> treatment plant number four? <laughs> You know, did it do its job? Millions and millions of dollars were pumped into that. And I know you weren't here when it was approved, sure. but boy, that was a controversial decision. With any incidents, when we activate our emergency operations, with any flood, we always do an after action report. And so that will be significant because we will be looking at lessons learned, what can we be doing differently and better. And so I'm in constant communication with our council members to ensure that they have answers to all the questions that they may ask. Okay, okay. one yeah. more question. Uh, that video that we saw, we saw council members drinking the water. Did you drink the water? <laughs> of course, I was, okay. I was drinking at the whole press conference. I gotta ask you. <laughs> you do. Well, you definitely uh, earned your sleep. I know that you You've been had lots of sleep this night, so thank you so much for thank joining you. us this yeah. morning. It's great to be here. All right. All right. Well